Good morning and welcome to Wednesday Morning Yoga. This morning we're going to be focusing on the values that accompany the Tarjani Mudra, which is if we take two fists basically and extend our index fingers and place them together, the points of our fingers together, and then draw it back in front of our solar plexus chakra, we form this mudra. And this mudra is one that is associated with expanding the breath, opening the heart, deepening the breath. So today, a lot of our poses are going to focus on the heart and making it as big and expansive as we can. Go ahead, grab your blocks. Grab uh, something to sit on, a yoga pillow or a bolster or a block and join me on the floor. <clears throat> so to start out, always make sure in your first Sukhasana of the day that you're able to sit nice and tall. We want to have a nice open energy channel. We want to have a nice open airway. We want air to be able to flow up and down the spine without any constriction. We also want you to be comfortable and be able to relax your shoulders. So in doing so, you choose a position that allows your, your pelvis pull to slightly shift forward, encouraging an arch in your lower back, not a very big one, but an arch nonetheless, allows your sit bones to be firmly in contact with your sitting surface, and then allows your shoulders to pull back, stacking nicely over your hips, and then drawing your cranium back in the same plane as your back and your hips, so that your bottom of your chin can be parallel to the floor. Go ahead. Bring yourself to the mat, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. Bring yourself to this experience. And then just start to gently inhale and exhale through your nose. And as you inhale and exhale, pay attention that you're able to sit nice and tall, not leaning forward, not rounding your shoulders, but sitting up nice and tall, but also finding within that effort some ease. The ability for your shoulders to relax back and down while the crown of your head gravitates toward the ceiling. Now start to focus on the quality of your breath. Moving the breath up and down, in and out, using the belly. As you inhale, your belly should expand. And as you exhale, your belly should draw in. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale once again. And then exhale. 
Inhale, draw your hands up. And exhale them out and down. And really focus on expanding your chest as you bring your arms out. And bring them down on the exhale. Inhale out and up. And then on the exhale, go ahead, take one of your blocks. Now you can remain on your bolster or you can remove the bolster. I'm gonna remove mine right now. But we're gonna start off with our first opener of the day that helps to open up the back of our hips. We're gonna do this on both sides. So having your block on the floor, you can have it tall, you can have it short, it all depends on you. I'm actually gonna leave mine on the tall setting this morning because in the morning, I try not to overextend my joints. So go ahead, inhale the block high up into the air. And then on the exhale, place the block down in front of you. And then just work on moving the block forward and drawing your body parallel to the floor. Your body may not actually be parallel to the floor, <laughs> but it may feel parallel to the floor. But what you're really going for is a gentle stretch of the back of your right hip. And the reason I'm asking you to use a block is so that you're not compelled to reach for the floor and therefore round your back down. I want you to be reaching forward and out, allowing your body to naturally open in this pose, but really concentrating your first stretch of the day on the outside of your right hip. And just breathe in and out gently. Let's take another inhale together. And on the exhale, bring your block back which your feet position. In my situation, my right foot is in front. I'm gonna reverse that and place it behind my left foot. Maybe you wanna rise up, wiggle out your hips and allow your sit bones back down to make contact with the floor. Go ahead and rise your block up into the air with both of your hands. And then on the exhale, go ahead and place your block down. Move it forward to a position that will allow you to extend it away from the body, allowing your body to feel like it is parallel to the floor in front of you, but also allow your shoulders to be lifted and for your heart to be lifted so that you are not rounding your back. And then just concentrating the stretch on the back of your left hip. You should not feel this in your lower back. If you do, I advise that you bring the block back in. Kind of reconnect with your alignment. And then if you feel like you can, draw your shoulders on your back and reach out again. And then just focus on the stretch on the outside of your left hip. Or you're right, depending on which one you started with. Take another inhale. And then on the exhale, go ahead, move the block back. And then let's take a couple of easy seated uh, half moon stretches. Ardha Chandrasana, seated. So go ahead and sit all the way up. Draw your shoulders back and down, inhaling your heart center up to the sky. Exhale, place your left hand on the floor next to your left hip. And then on the inhale, bring your right hand up alongside your ear and then curl to your left, drawing your right shoulder back. You should feel a nice long stretch from 
your right hip all the way up your side body, all the way up through your ribs. Continue reaching and drawing your shoulder back at the same time. And just enjoy this morning stretch. I find that opening up our side waist is very good for opening up the hips. One more inhale. Exhale, bring your hand down and then lift up your left hand, lifting it out and up alongside your left ear, crawling over to the right, drawing your left shoulder back in space. Take another inhale, and then exhale, return your left hand down. And then let's do just a couple of easy twists to begin our morning. So go ahead, inhale, our heart center up to the sky, dropping our shoulders down. And then on the exhale, just turn gently to your right. Place your left hand on top of your right leg. Gently place your right hand behind you. And just draw your heart center to the right. Don't yank yourself into position. Just gently turning your body using its own strength and using your hands to anchor you. Take another inhale. And then on your exhale, go ahead. Return to neutral, take an inhale. And then on your exhale, turn your body to the left, placing your left hand behind you, drawing your right hand over to your left leg, and then just using the muscle of your body, the muscles of your body rather, to turn you to the left, using your hands as an anchor. Take one more inhale, and then on the exhale, return back to neutral. Let's go ahead and get into our tabletop position. And I'm gonna to turn to the side so that you can have a nice view of this pose. So when we're in tabletop, of course, what we want is for our hands to be right underneath the shoulders. We want our knees to be right underneath our hips. So that may mean moving your hips back in space a little bit, but drawing your hands a little bit underneath. A lot of times people will have their hands way out here and you want them right underneath the shoulders. And then what I want you to do is draw the crown of your head forward as you're drawing your tailbone back behind you and drawing your belly button into the spine. Draw your shoulders also down and back and get used to this pose, the feeling of this pose. In this pose right now, you are strengthening and lightly lengthening. Continue drawing your belly button into the spine as you gently breathe in and out. Take one more inhale, fully exhale, and then let's inhale our heart center up and our sit bones up as we head into cow. And then on your exhale, draw your belly button into your spine, tucking your tailbone, rounding your shoulders and dropping your crown as you move into cow. Inhale, reverse the order of that. Dropping the belly, lifting up your heart center, lifting up your sit bones. And then on your exhale, go ahead and draw the belly button up against the spine as you curl your back up to the ceiling. Inhale, reverse that.
drawing up the heart center, drawing up the sit bones. And then exhale, arching the back towards the ceiling. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, drawing up the heart center, drawing up your sit bones. And exhale, pulling your belly button up to the spine. One more inhale. And exhale, return to neutral. Let's take our first heart opener of the day. We're heading into Halloween. <laughs> so let's make spiders with our fingertips. And just keep our hips up nice and high. Allow our elbows to bend out to either side. As we draw our heart center down to the floor, allowing our shoulder points to touch each other on our spine. Ah. Inhale, lift up. And then exhale, allow your heart center to fall down to the floor. And just enjoy that stretch across the front of your chest. Inhale, rise up. And then on your exhale, go ahead again and allow your heart center to fall towards the floor. Oh my goodness, enjoy that stretch across the whole front of your chest. Oh my goodness. All right, let's go ahead and take our first front body stretch of the morning, reaching forward in puppy dog, staying up high on your knees. Your hips are up high. Your legs are perpendicular to the floor. Keep them in that position as much as you can as you reach your hands forward and allow for your heart center to drop towards the floor. Now, this is your first shoulder opener of the morning. So be gentle, be careful. I'm not going as far as I'm sure I will eventually get with this. I can touch my forehead to the floor, but I'm not as much extending my shoulders just yet. But go ahead and just enjoy that wonderful front body stretch. Let's take another inhale together. And then on the exhale, go ahead and walk your hands back. Go ahead and rise up. Hands on the waist. Let's just take our first heart opener to the sky. So just keep your hands on your waist. Lift up out of your hips as you allow your heart center to draw towards the sky, towards the ceiling. Don't curl back yet because we're just warming up the body. But just go ahead and lift up the heart. Feel the strength of the pose, but feel the opening of it at the same time. One more inhale, and then exhale. Sit back on your knees, and let's take child pose. Go ahead and lay over your knees. You can have your knees together, arms down alongside your knees. Let's start that way initially. You can place your forehead on the floor. You can leave it off the floor. Whatever feels good to you. Take another inhale, place those fingers in that spider position off the floor again. Rise up on your inhale. And then on your exhale, let's see if we can encourage some stretching of the shoulder. I think you might need to widen your feet to create that experience. So go ahead and widen, not your feet, I'm sorry, widen your knees, keep your feet together. And then just allow your heart center to draw towards the floor with your elbows pointed towards the ceiling, drawing your shoulder points together on your back. Again, encouraging that chest opening. So my face is facing the floor. My elbows are pointed towards the ceiling. My fingers are like spiders on the mat. And my hair is tickling my nose. That's all part of the pose. <laughs> Go ahead and reach out forward in your child's pose now. You've warmed up your shoulders a little bit so they have enough space, I would think, by now to reach forward fully. 
and just focus on drawing your sit bones towards your heels as you reach your hands forward. So this is a stretch that you might feel along the front, but also you might feel it in your back. And it's a very gentle stretch. And you can remember that child's pose is just such an expression of care for yourself. It is a grounding pose. It is a nurturing pose. It is the pose you can come back to any time that you need to reconnect with yourself, reconnect with your breath, calm down the nervous system. Let's go ahead and rise up. Let's take a first gentle twist. So take our right hand underneath our left arm, lay across our right shoulder, and just feel that gentle stretch all along the outside of the right shoulder. You might feel a little pinch on the right hip, further encouraging it some opening. Take another inhale. Exhale, rise up, switch hands. Thread your left arm underneath your right, lay down across your left shoulder. And feel that gentle opening of the back of that shoulder. Take one more inhale. And then on the exhale, go ahead and rise up. Tend your fingers and rise back up on your hands and knees. And then what I'm going to encourage you to do, having your knees as wide as you want or as close together as you want, just start to move the body in circles. You know, lift up the heart. Lower the heart. <laughs> Make circles with your hips. Maybe you want to focus on opening up the sideways. You know, whatever feels good to you right now. Just using this as an opportunity to move the body in various directions. Right now, I'm kind of undulating the spine. Make sure that you change direction at some point so that you're doing it equally on both sides, whatever it is you're choosing to do. But this is just like a free movement. Do whatever feels good to you. You're just organically opening up the body in ways that feel good. All righty. When you feel like you've done enough of that, let's go ahead once again, tent our fingers on either side and allow our heart center to drop towards the floor with our hips high up into the air, elbows facing the sky, fingers in the shape of spiders. Just once again, opening up that heart center. Ah, oh, very good. Let's go ahead and take some sun salutations. So moving up to the front of your mat, and doing a little bit of Clothing adjustment. <laughs> okay, so standing up at the front of your mat. Take a nice strong Tadasana. See how my Tadasana is, how my shoulders are stacked over the hips, and my head is moving back in the same plane as my back. Inhale your hands out and up. And then exhale them out and down. And really focus on expanding your breath, expanding your chest. Opening up your heart. Inhale your hands up. And then exhale them back. Down. Inhale them up. And let's try something different. Let's bring our hands down, kind of out to the side. And just allow the heart center to shine up to the ceiling. Opening up the throat. Widening your collarbones. Drawing your shoulders back and down, just expanding the chest, expanding the breath.
And then inhale, bring your hands up overhead. And then exhale. Let's go ahead, bend our legs forward and take Uttanasana. So bend our legs deeply, allow our torso to rest across the thighs. If you find that this is going into your lower back, bend your legs even more deeply. Just allowing your torso to just sit across your legs. Drawing your shoulders onto your back. Very nice. Inhale, rise up to Tadasana. Inhaling your hands up to prayer overhead. And then on the exhale, bend your legs, hinge at the hips, and lay back down over your thighs, allowing your hands to fall to the floor. Drop your crown. If you feel this in your back, bend your legs a little bit more deeply and draw your heart center up. Exhale, drop your crown. Inhale, rise all the way up. Hands to prayer overhead. And then on the exhale, let's take that one more time, bending our legs deeply, laying our torso across the legs, fingers to the floor, crown of the head drops. Inhale into a flat spine by placing our hands on our shin and drawing our crown of our head forward as we bring our shoulders back. And then on the exhale, place your hands on the floor. Take your right foot, place it back behind you, and drop your knee. Go ahead and grab both of your blocks so that we can use them to open up the heart in this lunge. So go ahead and draw them back to any position that feels right for you. For me, in order to really allow my heart to open, I'm actually drawing my blocks all the way back, almost in alignment with my hips. And then I'm just rising up my heart center as I allow my shoulders to drop. You can stay up high if you want, or you can move your hips forward to start to open up the front of the hips. Take an inhale, and then on the exhale, go ahead and move your left knee back to join your right. Go ahead and walk your hands forward in that puppy dog pose. And just enjoy the stretch, and you might be able to get a nice front body stretch now. Drawing your heart towards the floor, maybe your forehead is already on the floor. Inhale, rise up. Take your blocks and then go ahead and bring your right foot forward into that lunge. Adjust your blocks so that you can allow your heart center to shine up. And just go ahead, opening up the heart, opening up your left hip if that's available to you. Take an inhale and then on the exhale, go ahead. Tuck your left toes, lift up your left knee, and bring your left foot to join your right foot. Inhale into that flat spine. Exhale down into your Uttanasana, deeply bent legs. And then inhale all the way up. And exhale, hounds to prayer. Inhale. Exhale your hands down, and then inhale your hands up. Exhale, swan dive forward. Grab your blocks, take your left foot back into space again. Dropping your knee, adjusting your blocks to allow for the opening of your heart. Drawing your shoulders down. Pull your belly button slightly in to support your lower back as you rise your heart center up. One more inhale. And then on your exhale, go ahead. Bring your right knee back to join your left. And go ahead and walk your hands forward in that puppy dog pose. Take another inhale. 
and exhale, move your hands back. Feel free to breathe loudly. You might be hearing my breath on the microphone this morning. I'm engaging in that ujjayi breath where you slightly constrict your throat as you inhale and exhale through your nose, bringing cool air in, exhaling warm air. Okay, go ahead, rise up the heart center, left leg is forward, opening up the right hip. Bringing lots of air into the body. Let's take one more inhale. And then on your exhale, go ahead, tuck your right toes, lift up your right hip and bring your right foot right hip, right knee. <laughs> Bring your right foot forward to join your left. Inhale into that flat spine, drawing your hands against your shins, shoulders down, crown of your head forward. And then on your exhale, fold over your thighs, placing your hands on the floor, allowing your crown to drop. And then on the inhale, rise all the way up into Dadasana. Hands in prayer overhead. And then exhale, hands to heart center. Take a moment to assess, now that you've been moving your body, how do you feel? We're <laughs> actually already 40 minutes into this. So we're only gonna do a couple more of these sun salutations, but truly it's a very gentle routine this morning. Inhale, exhale the hands down, inhale the hands out and up. And then exhale, swan dive forward. Take your block, bring your right foot back, drop your knee. Inhale, your heart center up. And then exhale, moving your knee back to join your right knee. Reach forward in puppy dog pose. Inhale. And then on your exhale, go ahead, walk your hands back, grab your block. Take your right foot forward into that lunge. Draw your heart center up as you bring your shoulders back and down. Inhale. And then on your exhale, tuck your left toes, bring up your left knee. Bring your left foot to join your right. Inhale into that flat spine. Exhale down. Inhale, rise your hands all the way up. Prayer overhead. And then exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale. Exhale the hands down, inhale the hands out and up. Exhale, swan dive forward, grab your block. Take your left foot back, drop your left knee. Rise up your heart center, drawing your shoulders back and down. And then on the exhale, go ahead and bring your right knee to join your left. Walking forward into puppy dog pose. Inhale, exhale, walk your hands back. Take your left foot forward, opening up your right hip now. Drawing your heart center up as you bring your shoulders back and down, opening up that right hip. And then on the exhale, tuck your right toes, lift your right knee, bring your right foot forward to join the left. Inhale into a flat spine, drawing the crown of your head forward. Exhale, bend your legs deeply as you fold forward in Uttanasana. Inhale, rise all the way up. And then exhale, hands to prayer. One more of these, inhale. Exhale, the hands down. Inhale, the hands out and up. Exhale, swan dive forward. Take your blocks, bring your right foot back in space, drop your right knee, lift up your heart center as you draw your shoulders back and down. And then exhale, let's go ahead and take a runner's lunge as part of this. So just go ahead, move your hips back in space, stay up high on your blocks, allow your left toes to curl off the mat. Maybe adjust your blocks backwards a little bit to support you and just draw your heart center forward. Just starting to open up your left leg, your left hamstring. All righty, go ahead, bring your left foot back to join the right. Walk your hands forward in that puppy dog pose. Rise up, 
grab your block, take your right foot forward into that lunge, drawing your heart center up, opening up your left hip. And then on the exhale, bring the hips back in space, allowing for a runner's lunge on the right side. Bring your blocks back, lifting up your heart center, and yet drawing it forward at the same time. This should be enough to start to feel a nice stretch along the back of your right hamstring. Go ahead, inhale. Moving forward, tuck your left toe, tuck your left knee, bring your left foot forward to join your right. Inhale into that flat spine, exhale down. Inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, hands to prayer. Inhale. Exhale, the hands down. Inhale, the hands out and up. Exhale, swan dive forward. Take your blocks. Take your left foot back in space. Drop your knee and move into that lunge. Inhaling our heart center up. Exhale, moving our hips back in space, allowing our curls, to, our toes to curl off the mat as we move into a high runner's lunge. Again, drawing your hips back as you draw your heart forward. You don't need to bring your, your body down. Go ahead, move forward. Bring your right knee back to join the left. Move forward into that puppy dog pose. One more inhale. And then on the exhale, go ahead and rise up. Grab your blocks again. Move your left foot forward into that lunge. Draw your heart center back. I mean, I'm sorry, draw your shoulders back as you lift up your heart center. And then exhale, go ahead and draw your hips back in space as you curl your toes off the floor, allowing your heart center to pull forward as you bring your hips. And then let's go ahead, tuck our right toes, bring our right foot to join our left. Inhale into that flat spine, exhale down into Uttanasana, and inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, hands to prayer. Oh, doesn't that feel just lovely? So let's go ahead and uh, add, our, add our signature gait pose sequence that we usually have in the morning. So go ahead, drop down to your knees. Okay, go ahead and take your right foot out to the side, drop your left hand to the floor. And what I want you to do initially is just rise up your right hand to the ceiling and just use this as another opportunity to open up the chest. Just go ahead and draw that hand back in space, supporting yourself with your left hand Lifting up your hips, right foot is out to the right, extended towards the front of the mat. And then I just want you to open up the chest. Allow your head maybe to fall back. Just really focus on drawing back that right hand to open up that right shoulder. Take one more inhale. And then on the exhale, go ahead, rise up both hands on your hips, put your right hand on your right leg, bring your left arm up alongside your left ear, and then curl to the right in your gate pose. Let's go ahead, place our hand on the floor again, left hand on the floor, right hand overhead. Open up your heart. And then go ahead and rise up, placing your right hand on your right thigh, bringing your left arm up overhead, curling to the right in that gate pose. Now another variation you could take with gate pose is you can actually turn your leg out so that your heel is on the floor and your toes are towards the ceiling. And therefore you encourage kind of a gentle stretch of the hamstring. Decide which version you like better, foot on the floor, with your toes down, your foot sealed on the floor, or just the heel on the floor. <sighs> right arm to the ceiling, left hand down, 
And then let's rise up again in that gate pose. I'm gonna take the variation with my toes facing the sky and curl to the right. Very lovely. Go ahead and rise up. Place your hands on your hips. Bring your right knee to join your left. And then take your left foot out to the side towards the back of your mat. Place our right hand on the floor, left hand to the ceiling, and then go ahead and just allow that gentle opening of the chest, stretching your left shoulder back, arm is behind you, maybe you're dropping your head down. And just enjoying this stretch. Which you should feel all along your left sideways. And in the front of your left shoulder as you open up your chest. Go ahead, place your hands on your waist to your hips, rise up. Go ahead and take your gate pose. Left hand on your left leg, right arm up alongside the right ear and then curling to the left. Curling as deeply as you want to go. It's really a very safe pose. It's really nice to open up the sideways. Go ahead, placing your right hand on the floor. Left hand overhead, so maybe you want to encourage that opening again. Rise up, left hand on the left leg, bring your right arm up alongside. Maybe you want to take that other variation of gait where you lift your toes up to the ceiling, heel on the floor. Rise up, right hand on the floor, left hand overhead. And then we'll rise up again. Take whatever variation of the foot for gait that you want. My toes are pointed towards the ceiling. Heel on the floor. And then curl to the left. Oh, very, very, very nice. Go ahead. Bring our knees back to join one another. And maybe sit back down on the knees. And let's take this opportunity, use the blocks, don't use the blocks, experiment a little bit. Let's just experiment on opening up the heart center. So right now I'm just sitting back on my heels and I'm just gonna use my blocks in various positions to move them behind me to lift up my heart and stretch out the front of my chest. And so you do whatever feels good to you. It's sort of like we're doing a modified camel. You can bend your arms backwards even if you want to. Just really focus on getting a nice stretch across the front of the chest and maybe across your front of your shoulders. Take another inhale. And then on the exhale, go ahead and fold forward. Oh. And maybe in folding forward, it's sort of like when you go into pigeon. Maybe you lay on your forearms initially, or just stretching out a lower back gently. Go ahead and rise up, but we're going to take our final resting pose of the morning. I'm going to encourage you, as I have been the last few weeks, to go ahead and allow your legs to be up the wall. And we're going to finish off in Shavasana. So go ahead, draw hips as close as you can to the floor. I find I have to kind of turn to the wall <laughs> and then pivot my legs up the wall after I've gotten my sit bones up near the wall. So you can have your legs bent, you can have them straight. It's really whatever is most comfortable for you. I've got a lot of openness in the back of my legs usually for this, so I find I am very comfortable having my legs up alongside the wall straight up. You can also lift up your hips if you want 
by placing them on a block. Some people enjoy that sensation of releasing their sacrum and allowing the block to fully support the sacrum. So you would have it across your lower back. So you can play with that and adjust it in ways that are comfortable to you. So and you might even need to move everything closer to the wall in order to feel supported in that. And that's acceptable as well. Some people enjoy that relief. So you pick whatever works for you, or you can just have your legs bent if you want. And maybe if you want, you can even take blocks and place them up on your belly to support your legs so that you can tr truly release the legs into the block. So you do whatever feels good to your body. But at the rate, it's really good for you to reverse the blood flow and to have your feet up overhead. It calms the nervous system by doing so. It allows all the blood to come back to the center of the body, nourishing all of your internal organs nourishing your heart. So lay here gently. Allow your arms to relax. Allow your hands to relax. And start to scan your body. So let's begin with our feet. With your feet there up along the wall, fully relax the foot. The foot no longer has to work. So relax your toes, the top of your foot your ankles, your arches, and your heels. Moving that relaxation further down, relaxing your shins and your calves, relaxing your knees, and continuing down, relaxing the tops of your thighs and your hamstrings, allowing the floor to fully support your hips, Make sure that you relax all the muscles of your lower back, of your outer hips, and of your lower belly. Continuing to allow the floor to fully support you with your ribs just sinking into the floor. Relax all of your side waist and solar plexus muscles. Relaxing your hands, maybe allowing your fingers to gently curl. Relaxing the palms, your wrists, your forehead, your forearms, and your elbows. Continuing to scan upwards. Relax all the muscles of your chest. Relax your upper arms. Relax your shoulders, your collarbones. And now, moving on, relax your neck, especially the back of it. Relax the part of your cranium that is touching the floor. Fully relax your jawline. Relax your tongue away from the roof of your mouth. Relax all the muscles of your face, including your ears. Move out the lines of your forehead as you relax those muscles. Arriving at the crown of your head. Fully relaxing. So this Saturday is Halloween. And it will also be a full moon. So I'd like you to visualize in your mind a beautiful full moon, maybe a harvest moon, big and orange yellow in the sky. Imagine that you are somewhere with minimal light pollution. So you don't have the lights of the city taking away from the sky. And up in the sky, you see so many 
start. So many. You think I think I could count those stars. And you start to count them and realize that there are just too many to count. So you have this brilliant sky full of stars, a big full moon. And then imagine the light from that moon coming through the October trees, which may have lost a lot of their leaves by now. Imagine the crispness in the air. Imagine what the air smells like. Combination of maybe wet earth and decaying leaves. And then do you hear anything? Is there a slight breeze or a breeze in the air? Do you hear any coyotes or any other animals off into the distance? Just hang on to this visual and relax. You should take Shavasana for a minimum of five minutes each time you practice to fully integrate all of the benefits of your work in your practice. Stay here as long as you want. In the meantime, the yogi in me honors the yogi in you. The light in me joins the light in you. Namaste.